Uh, I'm, I'm fairly certain I'm the only one who's going to be up here tonight who is absolutely not funny at all. Uh, so here's the thing. To do what Christian and myself and, and Mark and Alicia and Mary and, and so many of the rest of you in this room do, you have to be a very special kind of stupid. You have to be willing to put yourself in front of hundreds of thousands and millions of people every week, expose yourself your thoughts, your opinions, simply <clears throat> so people can target you and get angry at you for taking your 140 character comment out of text, out of context, slamming you for it, whatever, because you didn't like that movie, you attacked my childhood, all these, the, the, the hours you have to put in, the miles you have to drive to go to screenings and to these meetings that ultimately are probably stupid and useless. The fact that you have to be the target of a lot of people's ire all the time. They have to work with people that sometimes understand you and sometimes they don't understand you. And I'm sure some of you in this room have been understood and misunderstood by Christian Harloff many times. But you also have to be able to do this. You have to have a passion inside of you that is just bursting at the seams and has to be shared with people. Beyond that, you have to have the ability to take theoretical thought and manifest it into actual communication in a way that hundreds of thousands and millions of people every week can hear, digest, relate with, and become emotionally attached to. That is a very rare combination. Some of you can have that passion and that skill to communicate and share that passion to the point where millions of people are wanting to share it with you and feel like they know you even though they've never met you. I told this story to, to Mark and Christian and, and uh, our staff when we were still at AMC. But it creates these types of connections. We had a guy write an email to us because of the show that Christian and Mark and I do. And it, it broke us down. It was a guy whose nephew was dying. This is a great thing to come up after a comedy <laughs> skit. Whose, whose nephew was dying. And, he, and there was nothing they could do for the kid. And him and his brother and their family, he wrote this letter to us telling the story about how in the final weeks of this young guy's life, him and the family and the, the whole group of them would all sit around together and listen to movie talk, the show we do together. Because the kid loved comic book movies, he loved all these things, and as a family they could share those times. Christian is the type of guy who's the type of communicator that families he has never met in his life share the most intimate, joyful, and painful moments together. Now, all these things make Christian an exceptional man, but it is not what I admire about him. You see, what I admire about Christian is what he is, not as a performer, not as an online personality, but what he is as a man. Because in the hours and hours that we spend sitting down in my office, talking about, you know, programming ideas and pitching ideas and what we can do about this and then these grandiose things and all that kind of stuff, every conversation I've ever had with Christian that's about grand scale things, it always comes down to two things for him, Sadie and his daughter. Every time, every, every idea, every plan we ever come with, at the end of that sentence is, for him, how does this affect my daughter? How does this affect my family? And that's really what's important. You know, Christian can have the enthusiasm of a seven-year-old boy sometimes, and the only thing that makes him smile bigger and makes him smile brighter and make him glow more than when he bursts into my office to show me the newest fan picture that somebody just put together for us or show us the newest, show me the newest piece of Star Wars news, the only time he smiles bigger is when he's bursting in my office to show me the latest picture of his daughter or to tell me the latest cute story or to tell me about what him and his wife are planning. That's when he smiles the biggest. That's when he smiles the best. And it's almost embarrassing for me to say that you had to convince me for us to work together. It was, there were several conversations, and I just thought, man, you got, he's got Schmo's nose going. It's such a great thing. I don't want what we're doing to become a disruption on what he's doing. And we talked about it and talked about it. I said, are you sure you want to do this? And now, what, two and a half years later? I am so glad you did because I consider myself really privileged and really honored to work with you, to know you. I don't know, you know, so much so I even let you bring Ellis along. <laughs> but, but Christian, you're not just a great online personality, and you are a great online personality. You're a great man, and that's why I love working with you, that's why I love knowing you. To Christian Harlock, please.